So in my little world, here's the way it works. Yeah. Aftermarket parts shipped all the way from other countries to here to be used on your vehicle serve the people that make the parts and the people that put them on their estimates. The people that make the parts make money making the parts. Yep. The insurers save money using them. The only people they don't benefit is you, the consumer. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Airing of Grievances. My name is Eric Raymer. That's Robert Grieve. And as always, we greet you with gratitude. Thank you for taking time out of your day to join us for ours. And if this is your first time here, we give you a special welcome. If you see something you like, all we ask is that you give a thumbs up. That tells YouTube that this is a good thing that's happening, and the algorithm will share the video with as many people as they decide to do. Uh, you can also help by sharing it if you want to click that link and then just send it off to your socials. That helps as well. And, of course, if you haven't clicked the subscribe button, what are you waiting for? This is a great place for uh, all kinds of videos that help you, the driving public, understand what goes on behind the scenes here in the collision industry. With that, I say happy Saturday morning to you. To you, my dear friends. So good to have you with us today thank you so much for joining us absolutely appreciate each and every one of you and now Rob uh, interestingly enough uh, another one of our mutual friends in the industry uh, gave me a phone call yesterday and asked for uh, a, an article basically on a similar topic than what we're going to be talking about today mm -hmm. and it has to do with the decertification of certified kappa we're going to get to what that is in just a moment certified kappa aftermarket parts let's begin with the foundation we don't use aftermarket parts here we never have we're never going to however we understand that there are a great majority of shops especially the ones that are in partnership with the the insurance companies we call those drp direct repair program shops that do use aftermarket parts and in many cases use these kappa certified aftermarket parts that become decertified sometimes they can yeah right mm -hmm. and, and they do the question is what happens when they do yeah so is that does that set the stage all right yeah so uh, again keeping in mind that these videos are, are built for the consumer in mind uh, and to try to save you some trouble down the road yeah uh, you know I, I've been interacting with somebody that uh, is from another state asking for help and they have done the most extensive research and involved the Department of Insurance in that state and notes and emails and letters and and the first thing that came to my mind is I wish you had done all that research before you bought that insurance company's policy because then you wouldn't have to do all this research so picking the right insurer is very very important absolutely but if you want that's not today's subject it may not be but uh, if you want you can check out this video on which insurers kind of uh, get to the head of the class yeah. and won't cause you the headaches that that gentleman is going through. Yeah. All right. So there's uh, several different types of parts that may be included in the repair of your vehicle. Not here, but at other places. Okay. And so we have salvage parts, parts that uh, are off a car that was damaged beyond repair and the auction the, you know the the salvage yard bought it at the auction and is parting it out and selling parts supposedly good parts uh and so that that's salvage parts or okay. lkq parts like kind and quality like kind and quality right then there's plain old aftermarket parts which are parts not made by your manufacturer 
but by a third party in some other part of the world, generally speaking. Okay. And shipped overseas to here, and then there's these uh, distributors that that sell them. All right. Then you have Kappa certified aftermarket parts, which is a, a step above that because at least there's some notion of certification. <laughs> uh, and lastly, and this is all we use, is original equipment uh, manufacturer's parts, which means if you're driving a Ford, we're only going to buy parts from Ford. Right. If you're buying a Toyota or a Lexus, we're only buying parts from Toyota and Lexus, brand new, not LKQ used, not aftermarket, not even certified aftermarket. You're not going to find those here. Right. Uh, and this is, it, it's an important subject uh, for you, the consumer. You do not want any of those other parts on your car. And let's just talk specifically about aftermarket parts. Okay. And because the other aftermarket parts aren't worth the time of day, well, let's focus on Kappa uh, certified aftermarket parts. Gotcha. Um, again, they're not something that we would use here but you may find them on your estimate. And you're almost always gonna see them on your insurance company's estimate. I would caution you, you should never see them on your repairer's estimate. Yeah. Because the repairer's estimate's what's really going on the vehicle. Um, and so an example of that is right here where you see the section of the front headlights. Yeah. We're gonna, not we, the insurance company has sourced an aftermarket Kappa right headlight. And, you know, the price is, is probably, in this particular case, maybe $90 less than a factory one. Okay. Uh, or an OEM one, original which is, equipment. Which is why they're recommending this part. Yeah. Because if it costs them less, they don't have to pay for it. Yeah. And that means profit in their in their pocket. So in my little world, here's the way it works. Yeah. Aftermarket parts shipped all the way from other countries to here to be used on your vehicle serve the people that make the parts and the people that put them on their estimates. The people that make the parts make money making the parts. Yep. The insurers save money using them. The only people they don't benefit is you, the consumer. Why? Uh, they're not the same. They are not the same as factory parts. Uh, and, and it's interesting, one of the little taglines is, if it isn't Kappa certified, it isn't a genuine replacement part. Well, I don't think I could disagree more. Uh, if it's not OEM certified. <laughs> It's, it's, it it's is not, not a, a genuine, genuine replacement, replacement part. part. That, that's really the way it should be. Um, and you don't want these parts on your vehicle. They diminish the value of your, of your vehicle. They may create safety risks in certain situations, depending on, you know, if it's a safety item like a structural item or a, a, a rebar that's meant to, you know, take energy on and take it off of you or... Uh, a headlight that isn't gonna, that's either a different color or, there's so many, they're not the same. And when I talk about aftermarket parts, uh, just so I'm clear for some of the other people that have commented before, I'm talking about crash parts. Parts that would be used in a collision repair. Not high performance aftermarket stuff. It, this, is, this is stuff that would be used to save money at your expense on your vehicle. Right. And that is their only purpose. Their only purpose. Gotcha. So, background is set. Yep. Uh, and the reason we're bringing this up, because we've got other videos on this topic. Could do. Um, is because they came out, uh, a news release came out this week. Updated Kappa Tracker now sends parts issue notifications through the app. So they have an app now. And Kappa does. Kappa, Kappa has an the, app. This association. Yeah. Let, let's just tear that apart for a second. 
CapaTracker now sends parts issue notifications through an app. That means there's problems. That's what that means. We don't ever get this and have never had it with an OEM part. But these parts, they land up on one of two lists. And I just had a, a, a Toyota uh, Tacoma or something like that that the insurance company wrote uh, an aftermarket bumper on and a Kappa certified aftermarket bumper. And I went to the weekly decertified list and lo and behold, that bumper's on the decertified list. Decertified list. Yeah. So what that means is Kappa certified the part. Right. Gave it its little sticker, which we'll show you in a minute, and now stands behind that part. But somewhere, something changed. Whether it's in the manufacturing process, whether it's the materials they're using, whether it's the welds they're using, the type of plastics they're using, something changed, and now the part is going to be deemed decertified. So... In this particular case, if this was your repairer, says aftermarket cap of front headlight, maybe that headlight is going to become decertified, but you were sold a certified part. Now that it becomes decertified, you don't have the value that you did before, not that you had that much value to begin with, but <laughs> it's, it's you even, have even less value. It's even less. And now it's a potential safety risk. Uh, so we get a weekly... Kappa decertified list. We being nylons. I mean, every anybody can get it. Okay. Um, and it shows all the parts from that week that were once certified and now they are decertified. We also get a monthly recap of all of them, and at the end of the year, I think we'll get a year-long recap. Okay. Of all of them, I'm not positive on that one, but as a consumer. Even if you went and looked at this list and looked at all the parts on your estimate and tried to see if any of them showed up on this list, it, it's damn near impossible. It's damn near impossible. We're going to go to a couple of items inside this article. Great job, Laura Lowry at uh, Repair Driven News. Thumbs up. Thanks so much. Uh, great information in this article if this is a subject you're interested in. Absolutely. Uh, the Certified Automotive Parts Association, otherwise known as CAPA, it's an association. Uh, the tracker can now automatically inform repairers, your body shop, of any issues with CAPA parts they've used so that they can notify their consumers. Huh. Never once in all my years have I ever heard of an instant that a repairer did that. You've never heard of an instant where a repairer notified the consumer, right. their guest, that they have a faulty part that they installed on the car. Now, maybe it wasn't faulty at the time, but it still wasn't OEM. But it's been if decertified. You're, right? If we're putting OEM parts on there, you never have to worry about them. Right. Because the OEM, if they got a recall situation, they have to jump through all sorts of governmental hoops. You bet they do. Uh, that, uh, well, these people have a tracker. <laughs> An app. Yeah. That you uh, can't have... Because you're not a body shop. Yeah. Uh, and so, if you went as far as you, you didn't want to spend the extra money and your policy didn't allow it, uh, didn't allow OEM parts, they, they're only going to fund aftermarket parts, and you're in a pinch and you don't have the extra money to, to buy the OEM parts, that happens. Okay. Uh the shop, according to this, is now on the hook, which truly they've always been, but now there's an app for that, <laughs> uh, to notify you if any of these parts become decertified or worse. What could be worse? Well, they not only have this decertified list, but they also have public safety notices in a separate part of the CAPA 
uh, site. Okay. And the uh, public safety notices look just like this. Um, so far, there's 12 of them that have been issued for this year. 12. 12 of them. And it says public safety no notice, Inter Intertech warns a potential safety related issue with, in this particular case, with a radiator support bearing a Kappa quality seal. So what's a Kappa quality seal? Let's talk about this for a second. Okay. You let's. got a little picture of... I do. This is a car that came into our shop that was fixed someplace else. Uh-huh. And they left the stickers on the parts. Oh. Which, well, we wouldn't do it because we'd never buy the part. But, uh, so that sticker is like a quality assurance sticker. Okay. But for the purpose of this tracker, what they're suggesting is that somebody in the shop organization take a picture of each one of these because every part comes with its own sticker. Yes. So they want you to take a, part, a picture of it, load it into their tracker app with an RO number so that later down the road the shop can be notified if one of those parts is decertified. And I'm not even sure if uh, it notifies them of these public safety notices because they don't show on the... De by the way, this is what a decertification list looks like from... Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, and all these parts were certified and put on estimates as certified, but today they're not certified. So so I have a just a fundamental question, if, if you don't mind. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in the background, you can see people walking around. These are our technicians who are uh, taking care of our guests' vehicles with the OEM parts. Um, they are very busy. And my assumption, and of course, it's just an assumption, is that there are other shops that are also very busy, and their technicians are very busy doing whatever it is that they do, but I can't in the, in the, in the first part imagine any of our guys having the time to slow down everything pull out their phone take a picture or two or ten throw it into an app label it with the ro number that's the repair order number and and, and do all of that so my and question then somebody still has to track if there ever becomes a problem my question to you is can you see that happening here no no and and here's the thing the, Places that, that want to use these tar types of parts are churning and burning. They're getting cars fixed, lickety-split, so that there's less rental and all sorts of other things that they're graded on from insurance companies. So much less the time and opportunity. It's... I've never heard of an instance of a shop notifying a consumer there's an issue with something they put on the car. You're probably brand new in the industry, Rob. Mm -hmm. um, what? Uh, how, how long have you been a part of this industry? Oh my God. I guess I, I passed a 30 year club. I'm now in the 40 year club. You're, you're in the 40 year club. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I want to go back to this particular public safety notice. Because yes. remember I said that there was 12 issued for uh, 2023, which we're not done with 2023 yet. Not yet. Uh, there were nine issued in, in 2022. Okay. But 10 of these are on Honda parts. Honda. And they're all the same part, just different years, makes, and models. And really? it's for a radiator support. Excuse me for just one minute. Mm hmm. You said they're all Honda parts, but they're all Honda. Honda vehicle Kappa aftermarket certified parts yes okay yes yeah. and and they're not I don't know if they're on the decertified list or not because it doesn't distinguish if there's a public safety notice or it's on there but this is the grand poobah the, the public safety notice there's there's something because dangerous. they're they're saying that there is a problem with this part and it bears their seal got it so Let's uh, let's take a look at a radiator support. So this is a radiator support inside of a car. 
yeah. you got some arrows to it. I'm, I'm going to make, because there's still parts attached to it. Of course. But you can see in the middle, there's the radiator, and that's why it's called a radiator spore, because the radiator sits inside of it. Okay. Some are bolted onto the car. Many are welded onto the car. Oh, okay. Uh, and so let, let's just uh, take a look at just what a radiator support looks like. And there's a picture of a radiator support. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see it. All right. And if we wanted to see what they looked like, because you can buy them as an assembly from the factory. Right. And aftermarket. Or you can buy them in individual pieces. So there's an exploded view of what the pieces are that make up a radiator support. I see. Generally, all those pieces are welded together. Okay. Um, but I want to go back to this picture, and you notice on the side there's something yellow. I, I do see that. So let's get a closer look at it. Oh, it's a clip. No. No. That's a clip up there. Oh. Okay. But over here, bolted to the radiator support, one on either side, are your airbag sensors. So if you take an unknown piece, like a radiator support, that we don't know what kind of metal it's made out of, we don't know the tensile strength of the metal that it's made out of, we don't know the quality of the welds that welded it together, we know nothing about this other than it's meant to save the insurer money, and there's other people that are going to make money on it, and you are the one left holding the bag. Well, talking about airbag sensors... Maybe we have something to illustrate how important they are. Not only do we have something, but From Honda, Honda put it out. And uh, take, take a quick look at this in the difference of one one-hundredth of a second in airbag deployment. Whoa. And so, here's the thing. If we don't know the tensile strength of that metal, we don't know the weight of it, we don't know what kind of metal it's made out of, how thick it is, uh, and we weld it into your car, we don't know if, if another accident were to happen, is that going to fold exactly the way Honda wants it? And you just saw from the video that one little tiny itsy bitsy bad weld or misshape or something else. A difference. Uh, use your melon. Use your melon. Use your melon. You know, these aftermarket parts are serious business. We don't recommend them. I'm not in love with recommending a shop that would use them. I think that you should be very cognizant if you see them on your estimate and ask a lot of questions, find out what the difference is in price to get original equipment parts, because it may not be that much more. Sure. Uh, you're always better to have the factory parts on your vehicle. It helps retain the value of the vehicle. These parts absolutely diminish the value of the vehicle. It, it, your car is worth less. Right. Your car is worth less. Uh, and it shouldn't be. You're supposed to be made whole after an accident. And whole means exactly that. And if you're walking away less because somebody saved money on aftermarket parts, to make then you're not whole. To make themselves profit. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's what I have for today. That's a lot. Engage. Uh, I always tell people, get a copy of your estimate before repairs begin. Uh, from the repairer, get a copy. If anything changes throughout that repair, which is very likely today, and pay attention to it. Ask a lot of questions. If you see that aftermarket uh, part on there, it's going to be a bumper, or a rebar, or a headlight. Could be all sorts of different things. They're not what you want to use on your vehicle. It's a big, and, big red flag. And and now. 
you know, this thing tells us that the shop should be notifying you. There's nobody going to notify you. I'm just telling you. There's nobody going to notify you. And if you hear somebody, no, please let me know. <laughs> yeah, this is one instance that we'd actually like to be wrong. Yeah, uh, yeah. But it, it's not likely. It's, it's not likely. It's not likely. So there you go. All right, Rob. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate you. Happy Saturday to Happy you. Happy Saturday to you, my dear friends. Thanks for tuning in, hanging out with us. And uh, I hope you have an amazing week, and I'll see you next Saturday. God bless.